Hi, and welcome to the Waynesburg University Athletic Training Preceptor Training Workshop. My name is Bobby Bonser. I've met most of you, I know, or all of you, and most of you have taken this training workshop before. Now, there are obviously things that we update every semester. There's some new changes in our program. There's some changes to the way we lock hours and a tracks. so make sure that even if you know some of the stuff, you can skip through the stuff you already know, but stop on the highlighted things and things that are different as you go through. I'll also be sending you these in PowerPoint slide form so you can go through on your own time as well. Um, first off, I just want to say thank you so much for all you do, and I really do mean that. Our preceptors are key. Without our preceptors, without you, we really couldn't have a program. Our students learn probably more of what they do and take away and will take away into their practice is what they see you do and what they learn from you. So thank you so much for all that you do for our program and for our students. I like this quote and it's from an article in 2003, but I think it really still captures what clinical education is all about. It's really trying to get the students to take the theories that they're learning that we're teaching them and apply it to practice in uh, problem solving, decision making, and using their critical thinking skills. So again, you play that role in really helping our students to critically think through these things. So why are we going through preceptor orientation every semester? Well, like I said, there are some things that change and also, as I've already said, preceptors spend, you spend so much time with our students that we wanna make sure that our students are getting a quality education and that they're learning things that are really helpful for their practice. So the purpose then is to make sure that you all are ready to educate our students, to create a good learning experience for our students and to help you understand the program and current and new standards a little bit better. There's our learning outcomes. I'm not gonna read through all of these, but you can look through the things that we'll be talking about. And as a brief outline, I'm just gonna give a brief introduction of the university because most of you are familiar with Waynesburg. We'll go through that quickly. Introduction to um, <clears throat> the program, becoming a preceptor, challenges that you may perceive in clinical education, professionalism, and then I, have, I don't have on this slide but ATRAC and how to log hours and use the evaluations with ATRAC, which is always big questions. So as many of you know, Waynesburg is a Christian private liberal arts university. We have about 2,500 students and our president is Doug Lee. He's um, informed by Chancellor Tim Thyrene and the new provost this year is Dana Bear. So she's been a provost for this past year. We're accredited through middle states, the colleges, and our program is accredited through Katy. As far as our immediate staff within our department and people who you may need to know, this is a list. Um, again, I'm not going to read through everyone, but if you need to look up names or numbers, you can find that on the website as well. We also have extensive lists of affiliated clinical sites, and we are expanding these every year. Last year, we added EMS Southwest. We added Central Green High School. We're starting back up at Waynesburg Central High School. So we're really looking to pursue more avenues as we branch out, and especially as we develop a master's program, which I'll talk about on this slide. Our program started in 1989 and became accredited by Katie in 1998. Although uh, we're under review, or we will be under review in 2019 and 2020, or we are set to do that, we're looking to transition to the master's program before then. So we are no longer, as of next year, taking undergrad students for our program. And we will be taking master's students for the summer of 2018, next summer. So there will be a lot more details to come. and. We hope to maintain relationships with all of you that our master's students can come out and learn from you as well. There will be a few nuances that change, but we'll update you as we go along if you still wish to help out with our master's program. And we hope you do. 
the mission of our program really is to make sure that our students are getting the academic scholarship they need, but also getting those skills. And again, this is where these two meet, and this is why we have the clinical education portion, uh, because we need to make sure that they are learning from professionals in a internship slash apprenticeship model, and also having the theory applied. For our program, we obviously want our students to be well-rounded. We want them to be excellent healthcare providers, and we really want to focus on patient-centered care. So when we say patient-centered care, we want to make sure that our students are putting their patients first and really looking to the needs of others. This goes hand in hand with the mission of the university, which is to provide service in all aspects of life, um, fully engaging in the Christian faith at the same time. As many of you know, this hasn't changed. We have the basic program, which is the first two semesters or the freshman year. You will likely not see our students unless you're on the Waynesburg campus who are in the basic program. When they get into their sophomore year is when we start dishing them out or sending them to you at distance clinical sites. And they go through <clears throat> selection process and application process and uh, figure out where they can be placed once they get into that advanced program. I also laid out, or I put here, which is really helpful for you, the course progression. And why is it important for preceptors to know this? Because when we have students come to you, they'll know certain skills that they can practice. If we've taught it in the classroom, then they can practice it. So for example, if you look at the junior year here, fall, the students are taking therapeutic exercise and therapeutic modalities. So any student that you have who is in their junior year, fall or beyond, can begin to use rehab programs, um, modalities, and uh, massage, and things like that in their practice. So if they haven't learned it yet didactically, then we want to hold off until they've learned that in order for them to use it in practice. If you have questions about what a student has learned or hasn't learned, please let me know as we go along and I'll be happy to send you information regarding that or you can ask the students. Each athletic training student will learn the concepts and then they'll want to apply it. So this goes hand in hand with what I was just saying. <clears throat> we would like them to get to the point where they're making clinical decisions really under the supervision of you all but being able to make those decisions and honestly being able to make some mistakes that aren't going to hurt patients, obviously, um, but making mistakes and learning from those. So that's what you're there for. And we hope that as they learn more, you can kind of take off the reins a little bit and give them more autonomy as they go through their rotation. The basic program, as you can see, is again their first freshman year and you won't be seeing many of them during that year. Then they go through an application process, which involves many steps that you can see listed here, and I'm not going to belabor that. And then they go through uh, the program, which involves all of these different competencies along with interprofessional collaboration, making sure that they're exposed to other professions. In order to stay in the program, the students need to maintain a minimum of a 2.7 GPA. And the big thing is they need to be sure that they're completing their clinical rotation. So for you, um, they need to complete their hours, which we'll talk about the hours requirement at the end. And again, just maintaining the grades and the responsibilities that we assign to them. And along with the clinical education, uh, we want to make sure that our students are being professional in their clinical education settings. So if you see students, and this is really important, that don't meet the dress code, and uh, we give some leeway with the dress code. We know that football practices obviously are a little more casual during hot preseason uh, than game, ba basketball games, for example where students might be dressing up in, um, in more dressy clothes than even khakis and polo. So 
there is some leeway there. Um, if you need to know specifics, we can talk about that when I come out to visit. The professionalism, just making sure that students are interacting with the student athletes at the high schools and the patients in the clinical setting um, on a professional level. If you see anything that concerns you, please let them know and let me know so that we can deal with that and address it appropriately. We expect the students to obviously be communicators first and foremost. We want to make sure that they're communicating with you of their schedule, of what they want to know, of what they need to learn, and what they might need some practice on. So we're hoping that they'll be engaged and that they'll be inquisitive and asking questions throughout their, their progress, especially as they get more comfortable with you as a preceptor and with their clinical site. As far as technology goes, we're allowing students to use their smartphones if it's going to help them with their clinical rotation. However, if you feel that the cell phone is becoming disruptive to their patient care or um, it seems like a distraction, like they're using social media, please feel free to put a policy on that for them. If a student violates the code of ethics, is unprofessional, violates any of the policies that I just went over, or if they're not getting their hours, um, then we will take appropriate course of action as it's designed here in order to make sure that the student is falling in line with our requirements. Now shifting gears here a little bit. So we talked about the students in the program. Now I just wanna talk about what being a preceptor is and some of the things that have changed at the end of this as far as hours go, evaluations, and what's required of you in order to fill out those and um, do the things that you need to do to educate our students. So without further ado, just jumping in here, the Katie designates a healthcare professional as any one of these that's listed on this slide here. And all of you hold credentials in some capacity, otherwise we wouldn't be asking you to be our preceptor. The main functions of a preceptor are listed here, and I'm not gonna read all of these, but the bolded items are really important, right? So directly supervising our students, we'll talk about what direct supervision means on the next slide. Instruct and assess, making sure you're asking questions of the students, uh, making sure that we're integrating clinical proficiencies. Now that means that the students will come to you with checkoffs, as you may have heard them call, be called before, um, they may come to you asking if you can help them with skills, and we give you the power. In fact, we encourage you to go through those scenarios with the students and check them off using their books or booklets so that you can give them feedback, um, not just making sure that they're doing it, but doing it well and giving them feedback on how to improve in the future. So again, this is a big part of their education that we look to you to help with. We also want to make sure that we're assessing the students on a regular basis, giving them feedback, and that's what the evaluations are for, really. The evaluations are the formal process applied to what we hope is a daily communication between you and the student. So um, again, we're hoping that the preceptor can, you, can give planned and ongoing education to our students, giving them feedback on what they need to improve on. We hope and expect that uh, you would model professional behavior, that you would communicate often with myself and the program director, Joe Schaefer, and that uh, you would be open to evaluation. So I'll be stopping by and I'll let you know when I'm stopping by to evaluate the site, make sure we have all the things we need, like emergency action plan, et cetera. And uh, we wanna make sure that you're setting expectations of students. Along the line of ex expectations, what does that mean? Usually the best way that we've found to do expectations is to sit down first thing with the student, maybe the day or two after you meet them, and outline what you expect, because I think the biggest area of miscommunication comes from students not knowing what their preceptors expect of them. So if you outline, I expect you to be here at such and such a time, 8 a.m., 
on Friday for setup. And then I expect you to help out with taping. If you have questions, ask questions, etc. These things should be outlined and they should be communicated clearly from you. And this really helps both parties, the students and you, because it helps you not to get frustrated with them if they don't do what you want them to or if they're not asking questions that you want them to ask. And it also helps them to know what you expect um, out of their learning experience. Now, direct supervision is required. Direct means that you can see them at all times. So if you're supervising them, if they're doing anything athletic training related, you'll, you need to make sure that you are present to the point where you can see them. And this is really important because we want to make sure that these students are, are not ready to be fully on their own yet. So we want to make sure that they can do things, make decisions um, by themselves, but have you overseeing those decisions. So that's what direct supervision means. I've already touched on the proficiency skills a little bit, but the skills that they're learning in the classroom are the ones they should be applying. When they learn taping their sophomore year, they should be able to apply that uh, right away. I'm sorry, in their freshman year, they learned taping. So they should be able to apply that right away in their sophomore year, for example. Along with mastering their skills, we want the students to practice in your rotation in the clinical site that they're placed until they get better or they start to master their skills. We want to make sure they're critically thinking. So engaging them with questions Maybe explaining what you're thinking when you make decisions. Uh, I know a lot of us are on autopilot during the day to survive, which we have to do in athletic training often. But just taking a few moments to explain what you're thinking and why you're choosing the modality that you're choosing or why you're choosing the exercise you're choosing really goes a long way because it shows the students that you're thinking and what you're thinking and it helps them to think through these situations critically. Once you feel like they've gotten a grasp of that, then we're asking questions. We want to go from the basic questions of what to so what and now what. And so we want the students eventually to be thinking through what would I do in this scenario? We want them to be thinking like they're the only ones on the field, even though they have you there to supervise them. And um, one, one more point on that last point, just making sure that the students are seeing you do something, then give them a chance to try it supervised, and then give them a chance to try it with you at a distance and see if they're comfortable with that. So taking the reins off gradually is a good way to teach those skills. Along with the skill development, we wanna make sure that evidence-based practice is a really big part, plays an integral part in their education. Now, I know it's a buzzword and I know sometimes we kind of cringe when we hear it, but what does it mean? What are we really looking for when we talk about evidence-based practice? And I would even say practice-based evidence. What we really mean and what we're looking for and what we're hoping that you can engage them with here is that they're looking to the evidence, they're looking to the scientific evidence of why are they making the decisions that they're making. If we're choosing ultrasound for a tendonalgia patient, why are we choosing that? Does the evidence point to, uh, for a patella tendonalgia patient, that it will help them speed up their recovery? And have them look up articles and bring them in. In the same light, we want to make sure that we're doing practice-based evidence, which means that the students are taking excellent notes while they're with you. That's a huge part that we hope is part of this education model is that they're learning how to take notes properly, take patient outcomes, and then analyze them. If the patient got worse today, why did they get worse? Is it because of the exercise you chose to progress them with? And then critically think about it. That's what evidence-based practice and practice-based evidence is really all about. It's stuff that you're probably already doing in your practice. So one of our main goals it can really be represented in this graphic, which I love this graphic, Bloom's Taxonomy. <clears throat> we want to go from the basic Bloom's Taxonomy of remembering and regurgitating to eventually 
creating as the last step. Now, how do you get there? You get there through these steps, understanding, eventually applying what you've learned, which is where the clinical education hopefully comes in, analyzing, are we doing things right? Are we not doing it right? Evaluating, can they justify why they've done something? And then eventually creating. Let's take what we've learned and come up with something new. Now, when we talk about professionalism, switching gears uh, from the learning development, we want to make sure that our students are, um, and our preceptors are characterizing a professional. What are we as a program trying to develop in our students or develop and enhance? We want to make sure that they're professionals. We want to make sure they are service oriented, that they're patient oriented, that they are looking to the patient's best interests and not their own. I want to make sure that they're communicating properly, taking notes, um, having integrity, altruism, accountability, all of the things that you think of when you think professionalism. Now, the standards that you are really going to help us with among the teaching are the hours. Making sure that our students get enough hours is really just a way to make sure that they're exposed to enough situations and scenarios and patient contacts where they can get the experience they need to be a professional. So we've chosen a number of hours for our sophomore fall to get them situated to allow them a little bit of leeway during their first semester in the advanced program. We are holding them to 100 hours. In the spring, sophomore year, and juniors and seniors, we need 150 for the whole semester. Now, this all doesn't have to be on your rotation since we switch once during the semester, but they should be getting about eight and a half hours a week. If they're not getting that, then you need to have a conversation with your student and they should be asking you for ways that they can get more hours or get more time in. And the hours must be approved by you on ATRAC, which we'll go over at the end of these slides. <clears throat> Along with that responsibility, the other responsibility on ATRAC that you have is to complete the evaluations. The athletic training student evaluation is where you evaluate our students. You should be giving them feedback and meeting with them about these as you go over and submit them. And then we have our students fill out their own self-evaluation and go over that with you. This is more for reflection. Do I think I'm doing things well? What are some things that I want to improve on as a student? And then they can talk with you about that, and you can help them address that in the second half of the semester. That's why we do it three times during the semester. I've changed the Likert scale this year. It was a little bit confusing. We had a, um, a 0, 6, 8, and 10 scale previously, but we're going to a regular Likert scale with a 0 being not observed, a one being strongly disagree, a two being disagree, a three being agree, and a four being strongly agree. And you're just rating the student based on their rank. So obviously we're not expecting a junior student to have mastered all their skills. We're not expecting a sophomore to, to master rehabilitation. So when you're rating them, keep in mind their um, what they've learned and what they should know. So hold them up to others in their class. The evaluation dates will be sent out. I'll communicate those through email. Usually a week prior, I'll send out an email reminding both preceptors and students to complete the evaluations. And then I'll send another reminder a day or two beforehand in case um, not everyone has remembered to fill those out in our busy schedules. Um, these are the dates that those will generate. And so if you need to come back and look at this, definitely let me know. Along with this, I'll be sending you your evaluations that the students complete of you and as a preceptor. And this just helps you know ways that you can improve and help them learn more. I'll also be um, evaluating the site, just making sure that we have the proper equipment, that we have the proper EAP, bloodborne pathogen. And if any of those things aren't there, then I'll, <clears throat> then I'll just communicate with you about those and we can get those taken care of as well.
One more thing um, that always appears on the preceptor evaluations that I just want to address is the old school mentality of clinical education was that the students are there as workers. They're there to uh, just run around and be a busy bee and fill up water and do everything at your beck and call. And this is just not the case. This is not what the clinical education is designed for. It's not what it should be for. And we want our students to be there as learners, not necessarily workers. Now, can they help with things? Can they help with water? Can they help with those things? Yes. Um, but we want to do it all with the mode of what are they learning while they're doing that? Are you engaging them in conversation as they're going through those things? Are they asking questions about what life is like as an athletic trainer? These are the things that we want to really promote. The student is there as a learner and not as a worker. So again, this is just the evaluations and when they'll generate. The preceptor evaluation is the student will fill one out of you, the uh, evaluation of your preceptor, and then the clinical site evaluations as well. All right, and the last thing I have to cover here is ATRAC training. I know this is where most of your questions are. They changed ATRAC last year, and we've only been using this for two years, so I know there's still a learning curve going on, and that's okay. And I'm gonna do my best to help you out with that, and if you ever need help, please just reach out, call, or email. I put these links on here. I'm not gonna click on all of them, but I put these on here with common questions that I get from preceptors each year. How do I find and reset my password? Probably the first one that comes to your mind after you haven't logged on all summer and uh, you forget your login information. So if you do need help, click on this video, watch it, and it's very short and, and to the point and very helpful. How do I fill out evaluation forms? This is again a really helpful video for a common question. Where do I go? Where do I find the form, etc. How do I approve student hours? This is a really good one because we have a lot of questions about what box do I check? And we're gonna go over that in the next few slides as well. So in a nutshell, for completing evaluations, just use your login. Under the notifications on the dashboard, you'll see preceptor evaluation of blank. Whatever student level you have, you might have, let's say, one sophomore and one junior you'll need to click on the sophomore evaluation and fill it out for that student. And same thing for the junior in the separate evaluation. Click on the form, follow the instructions. At the end, you'll e-sign your name. I know we had a login at the end, but that wasn't working. So we went to simply a mouse or finger signature, which hopefully will be a lot easier. And then you just click submit. So again, after you've filled out the evaluation, make sure that you type in some feedback here because that's really helpful for us to make sure that we know what we can do better. Sign your name and then click where this arrow is pointing here to submit. Don't forget to submit uh, because I can't see the evaluations unless you click the submit button. Uh, we've had in the past a few evaluations that are just sitting in limbo that I can't see because they weren't submitted all the way. To approve hours, simply log on, go to the hours on your dashboard, go to approve student hours, make sure that the X, the red X for each submission by the student that you see on your dashboard is changed to a check mark. Now you can do this in one of two ways. For example, you can see here student inputting hours and they put a little note here all you have to worry about is clicking. You can either click directly on each one of these, click, 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 and change it to a check mark. Or if there are a lot of submissions, you've waited till the end of the semester to approve them, you can click this checkbox, which will check all these. And then make sure, this is what everyone forgets, to click this little green oval. And when, when it's checked and then you click the oval, it will automatically approve all of those. If you don't click that little oval and you just click this checkbox, it won't do anything. So make sure that you go through that and um, that all of them have been changed. 
So lastly, I just want to say there are opportunities for you. We hope that this is not a one-way street, although it may feel like it sometimes, that you're simply volunteering your time. We hope that you will take advantage of the resources that we have here at the university and the relationship we have. We've been able to provide educational opportunities for preceptors in the past, um, CEUs using symposiums at Waynesburg um, we can offer. We're also down the road in the next few years hoping to get preceptors um, to either present topics that, that you are specialized in, either manual therapy or ASTEM, um, massage, anything that you feel like you're um, somewhat specialized in, we would love to have students learn from you and um, host workshops to get for you to get teaching experience or um, come here to learn those things. We're also hoping to host workshops like uh, Mulligan or Graston or things like that that you might want to become certified in. So this is the end of this year's training. I, I hope that I answered a lot of the questions that you have, but if I didn't, please feel free to contact me. The only thing left is really to take the quiz this year. And the purpose of this quiz is just to make sure that we're reviewing the important information and that we have on file with our accrediting agency, Katie, that you have completed this training. So uh, when you take the quiz, please remember to sign the bottom that says that I've taken the training module and I've completed that module. So again, thank you so much for all you do. I really can't say it enough. Um, our students learn so much and they do what they see. So um, thank you for modeling what an athletic trainer is or what a physical therapist is. Here's my contact information. Please reach out if you have questions. If you have questions about our program, feel free to email Joe Schaefer um, and he'll get back to you as well. Again, thank you. Thank you for your time. And I will hopefully be seeing you all very soon. All right. Take care. Bye.